Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. So we need to talk about this NBC Nightly News segment. A few days ago, Aptera was on NBC Nightly News, national news, um, and presumably a pretty large audience. And there was a good segment about the Aptera. It was about um, almost two minutes long. And the vast majority was very positive. And I thought it was a good segment, but there was a portion of it that is uh, problematic. So we need to talk about that. Well, here's the segment if you haven't seen it. Automakers across the world are racing to produce a future free of fossil fuels, but the electric car of tomorrow is anything but traditional. This is the future. Meet the Aptera, a three-wheeled electric vehicle that can run on the power of the sun. Is this the first solar-produced vehicle for market? It should be the first mass-produced solar electric car, yeah. The California-based company joins other international solar car startups in the race to create a vehicle charged by the generator in the sky. The car is technically classified as an auto cycle and designed to be as efficient as possible. You get rid of the weight, you get rid of the extra rolling resistance, uh, it becomes more aerodynamically streamlined. It's covered in solar cells that capture the sun's energy, delivering miles worth of power without needing to be plugged in. The company is hoping to start production next year at a price point below $40,000. We have 44,000 orders for this. We're not even in production. We took it for a test drive near San Diego. So in the most perfect conditions, like on a day like today, Aptera projects you can get 40 miles just from the sun alone. If that bears out, that means that most commuters will never have to plug this in. Our test model had some obvious flaws, and it could barely make it uphill without overheating. Ah, we're slowing down again. I think you're the first person to ever drive this on a hill. While there are limitations, experts envision solar EV could change the way we think about transportation, putting less stress on the power grid and utilizing free energy. You don't have to pay the billions and billions of dollars of grid enhancements you would need to charge all those electric vehicles. A dream of a gasless world, betting big on the power of the sun. Steve Patterson, NBC News. Okay, so I don't know if you caught this, but around a minute 17 into it, this is what they say. Some obvious flaws, and it could barely make it uphill without overheating. Ah, we're slowing it down again. I think you're the first person to ever drive this on a hill. While there are limitations. Okay. So that was an, an extremely bad look on national TV. And I think everyone noticed that there was a lot of talk on our Discord channel about this. Um, it appears that Gamma was going up a hill and not a very big hill either, a pretty small hill. And it uh, s slowed down and it seemed like it was thermally throttling and had a difficult time making it up the hill. And then they got a little quick blurb of Chris Anthony saying that, he was the first one to drive it up the hill, which I think was probably taken out of context um, in the longer conversation because they clip it and it made it sound like Aptera's have never been tested up a hill, which is obviously not true because there has been there's tons of videos of the Alpha vehicles making it up the hill, and they've tested Beta on um, you know at Chukawala Raceway in the desert in from pretty serious heat doing full on drag races and stuff. So you remember from this drag race video that Aptera put out, the difference is um, that that the uh, Beta has a actual radiator in the front. Instead of using the skin cooling, the underbelly skin cooling that the Aptera is gonna use in production. And so this uses a actual um, uh, radiator, but the the Noir, which is what they used in this uh, in this race. So you see Noir right here. So you see Noir, Beta, and then you see the Audi. And the, Noir has functional um, skin cooling. So that, but the Alpha vehicles have a very, very small battery. So, but this one has a functional skin cooling. So you can um, actually stress the powertrain system in the Noir. The Gamma, uh, when it didn't make it up the hill, there were a couple of things that I was thinking. One, there's an engineering flaw and uh, the, the skin cooling implementation in Gamma does not work because uh, clearly not being able to make it up that small hill in San Diego. And San Diego is hot this week, um, but it's not crazy hot. Um, it's probably in the 80s and that's not extremely hot. So that that would be very, very bad if the engineering problem or 
um, there was a part that failed uh, in the cooling system unexpectedly during the thing. And that would be a better uh, explanation um, because at this point, the cooling system should be locked down and it should be well tested and known that it can handle the, the, the thermal load that the Aptera will put on it. And if you want to know more about how the skin cooling system works, there's a video and I'll link this in the description below where um, one of the uh, Aptera engineers, Daniel, uh, who used to work there on the thermal system, explains how the thermal system works. But anyways, um, this was pretty concerning and kind of a bad look on uh, national TV. So um, we wanted to know what the story behind it was. Is it an engineering problem? Because at this point in development, that would not be good. And as it turns out, it is not an engineering problem. And Chris McCannon, who's doing a great job um, overall, but also he is uh, fairly active on our Discord channel. He came by and he gave us some official statements and some uh, unofficial clarifications. Okay, so here it goes. This is the official statement that Aptera put out. Um, as you are aware, Gamma was a snapshot in time from 18 months ago. While Gamma is not a production vehicle, it is a monumental step in that direction. We are applying all the knowledge learned from Gamma phase of development into our upcoming, upcoming Delta builds, which the team is excited to test and validate thanks to your support. In the meantime, Gamma is receiving select upgrades to show off more production capabilities. We are excited to show off those upgrades in the coming weeks. Okay, so this is kind of, um, you know, the official statements are always kind of vetted and and um, they, they, they don't, give us much detail but what it is is um what they're saying is that uh they're not they don't have all the systems on there okay so we were like uh, we need a more technical statement and chris came back with a more official technical statement from and some unofficial stuff um, so remember, we haven't had access to it since it's been used for investor visits overseas for the last six months. So basically, remember, they they really rushed out Gamma to make it to the fully charged event. I mean, they barely made it in time for the fully charged event. And um, it was there mainly to be a um, aesthetic shell to show what it looks like and the, sh the new shape of it. Because remember, they made it a little bit wider and to give it more room on the inside, and the to show the what the um, interior would look like because the interior changed from alpha to gamma, and then of course the interior in delta is fairly different. Like the center console is very very different uh, in the delta than the gamma, but it was more of a cosmetic piece than an engineering piece, and they did not um, they did not completely uh, make all the uh, uh, powertrain parts in gamma and they had to ship it off to italy right away and so they haven't been able they basically um got the shell ready for fully charged and immediately shipped it over to europe all right so um, if we go down further we get a more technical okay so the official uh, engineering statement was aptera vehicles have a cooling for motors and inverters that are incredibly capable Gamma's cooling system has yet to be completed due to its jam-packed investor tour in Europe, but has never experienced an issue. Due to the hot summer days and extreme hills, it became clear that the cooling system must be completed before Gamma performs any additional media visits. So I, I think everyone at um, Aptera realized that um, this was an issue um, after the NBC visit, and I believe they changed this right away. And so Aptera was um, a shell or um, fully charged. They just barely made it um, in time to get it to the fully charged event. It was mainly there as a um, aesthetic piece to show what it looks like um, cosmetically. And because remember, they changed the body to be bigger and give more interior room and they stretched it out a little bit so the trunk's a little bigger and also they changed the interior now the interior changed from alpha to gamma but then gamma to delta changes again especially the console the seats stay relatively the same and much of the other dash interior stays relatively the same but anyway it was a cosmetic model to show what it looks like and it, the powertrain was not fully completed and as in the engineering statement the cooling system was not completed and and they drove it around in europe when it was cold and that wasn't a problem and they didn't do any like they weren't racing it or trying to stress the powertrain system in the gamma it was more a cosmetic uh, piece to show what it looks like 
Um, but it, it became clear that they do need to finish it. And what was not finished, um, you can see here, the cooling system had not been hooked up to the motors yet. So it became, um, so the cooling system was hooked up to the inverters. The inverters get very hot. And I, I think it was hooked up to the batteries too, but it was never hooked up to the motors because the motors don't, uh, don't have as much thermal load as the inverters and I maybe it wasn't hooked up to the batteries either because the batteries don't have that much thermal load in, in most use cases either um, but the cooling system was not hooked up so if you see here um, this is a picture of beta you see the power wires here in orange and then you see this these are the coolant wires and the coolant wires were hooked up in the beta because they did a lot of powertrain testing and suspension testing on the beta but this is the part that was never hooked up in the uh, gamma they just didn't have time to do it they just hooked up the motor so that it was um, drivable but at at low power and um, if you look here this was a picture that we took at fully charged here's the um the lower control arm it's covered and you can't see if there's a coolant port in there but presumably the coolant ports are not uh, not in here and that was basically what became the problem okay so they are fixing that this is not a um this is not a problem with the design or the engineering it is a problem with they didn't have the time to hook it up before they shipped it off to Europe and they just got it back from Europe and they thought that everything was going to be okay for just as long as you're not like doing massive like drag races or or trying to um, give get maximum power from the motors but it became clear that um, um, I think I think probably what happened is NBC told them that they're ready and they're like oh yeah it should be fine and when are we going to get this opportunity again and they did it and it turned out it was not fine so that was probably not a great decision uh, in retrospect but you know everything is 2020 hindsight but I think the important issue at least for me is that it's not an engineering issue it was just a time issue all right so I, I hope that clears things up for you guys um and I, I, I'm pretty sure that they're going to um, put out a better statement in the next couple of days or next couple of weeks. And after they get the cooling system hooked up in the gamma, um, I, I hope and I think they will put out some videos of it going up hills in, in the desert. Um, I know nearby uh, San Diego, there are some large mountains uh, like Big Bear and the San Gorgonio Mountains or the, San, um, the Angeles Mountains. Um, so they could drive it up. It's very hot in the summer here around around big around the Inland Empire. Um, it's about it's about 105 degrees, 100, and it gets up to 110, 112 degrees. So if they could sh bring that up here and show it driving up a mountain in that kind of heat, I think that will put a lot of fears to rest. Also, they could drive it up um, some some hills towards Joshua Tree. Um, and that would just put these uh, thermal throttling um, issues to rest. And I hope that they do that. And I think that they will be doing that at some point in the future, hopefully in the near future. All right. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.